In the aftermath of the election judgment, there are now calls for the reform of the electoral and legal frameworks to strengthen the country's institutions for easy acceptance of electoral victory and to reduce litigations in the future. Joining us now is Ezen Wanwago, Chairman of the uh, Partners for Electoral Reforms. Thank you for joining us on Newsnight. Thank you. Now, there have been calls uh, here and there uh, that uh, the judgment went the way it did yesterday because of certain uh, loopholes in the, in the legal framework. Since 1999 till date, we've had three electoral reforms. Uh, speak to us about what we need to tinker with yet again. Well, I think, in fact, the legal regime with which the election was organized is, was um, its first bad day was on the 25th of February, the day of that election. So, mm. so it's mm. important that um, we understand that oftentimes we are so quick in, in wanting to make changes, you know, in terms of making changes rather than testing and strengthening what you already have and working them in a way that guarantees you some of the outcomes that you're looking for. Mm. Because the Electoral Act, the, you said three, is the most amended piece of legislation that I can remember. Mm -hmm. You know, every regime that comes tinkers, tries to tinker with the, with the electoral reform. In fact, an industry has emerged out of it, <laughs> if, you, if you permit <laughs> the use of that word. But mm. what needs to happen is what kind of reforms are we talking about? Right. There need to be attitudinal reforms. There need to be legal reforms. There need to be administrative reforms. So we have to compartmentalize those reforms mm. in a way that helps us to understand what we are dealing with. The political class of our country have constantly refused to become anywhere near reform. And for me, that electoral, that court, that election court yesterday was for me a, a sort of class. A, mm. if you like, a master class in electoral jurisprudence right. in a way that I thought that the different stakeholders in the electoral pyramid would have taken notebooks and pen and took notes for lessons mm. because a lot came out for everyone. In, whether you agree with it or you disagree with it, they, those loopholes, what does a lawyer do? What does lawyers do? Mm. <laughs> there are lawyers, lawyers take advantage of loopholes, loopholes if they right. exist. Mm. If you understand. Yeah. And then if you know those loopholes, it's not what you think should be. I've been listening to comments. A lot of people are talking about what ought to be. As of today, what is the law? Mm -hmm. So the first reform is first to begin to articulate an understanding of the current laws that we have mm -hmm. in an election in a way that demystifies it. Mm -hmm. There is a mysticism around the Electoral Act. For instance, mm. in a way that people have, you know, made it look like it is for lawyers. But it is not. It's a document. Electoral guideline is for documents. My sister, what you need to do is, oftentimes, you can begin simply by asking some of your guests, do you have a copy of the Electoral, of law? The electoral Act? So that it is the basis. It mm. is the Bible and Quran of election. So oftentimes, you see public commentary that is more driving out of what you are thinking in your head mm. rather than what is in the guideline, the laws that guide the election. Isn't that the fundamental problem, whether you're talking about the laws that guide elections or the laws that actually guide, you know, citizenship or governance or what have you, the discountenancing of the rule of law, setting it aside and doing what you feel you should do based on your own, you know, uh, uh, whatever. But what you're saying is that the, the issue is really not the legal framework. There's really not much of a problem there. It's the political will to do what is right by the, based by the on what... Class. Yeah. So, so the, how do you begin to correct that the first now? is to deal with the, outcom the outcomes. We need to harvest the outcomes. Mm -hmm. At the end of this, there is, a, there is a next level. When the Supreme Court has made a final determination, mm -hmm. we need to sit down especially the stakeholders in election. By that, I mean the security agencies, INEC, the political parties, media, civil society. We need to have a multi-stakeholder conversation about 
the things not from the point of the partisan lenses that you are that you are seeing mm -hmm. from the point of what can shift us from one point to the other mm -hmm. you have perennial issues of logistic challenges right but let's take it you know one by one on the issue of INEC for example I mean the electoral act is supposed to guide you know and guard how INEC conducts the not just the process of course the outcome and all of that in what aspects do you think INEC really needs to be, uh, you know, reformed based see, on the Electoral Act? Let me, let me be honest with you, right. and I've said this severally. Oftentimes, all the conversations about reform mm. is centered about INEC. INEC is one of the most oversighted public institutions in Nigeria, and that is what brought it to where it is today. In terms of the changes that we see mm. going on even within the institution itself, what is the for instance the IREF that is the problem? Yeah, is INEX attempt not constitutional? INEX attempt at improving first and foremost the integrity of elections. What does that mean? If you go on the cloud, you will not from 2003 to about 2011 15, there about you can't see anything on election in Nigeria in the cloud. Mm. So, INEC by itself, by all his own engineers decided that we need to bring an integrity quotient into our election. Okay, then. So also, that is a reform. That yeah. is introducing technology yeah. to assist in electoral integrity. Okay. Now, another, another area we need to also look at is uh, the length of time that it does take uh, to uh, push for this, um, uh, for tribunal to come up with a judgment or for uh, the political parties to push for uh, to kick against the result of an election I is there no way we can make it uh, faster than 180 days after the no election sure results? We, we are not in 180 days before mm. <laughs> we are in something much shorter yeah so we pushed it so there is there is room to push it further or to say look we can bring it closer but the thing is about preparedness if you if you are contesting an election you know that there are two outcomes if you win you'll be sued right if you lose you will You're sue, sue. <laughs> so whichever way the, the the part of the conversation that i i i'm not enjoying is the outsourcing of indolence and laziness on the part of people who should prepare, who understand these laws, because the laws are not invented today. Who are those? I mean, but, but the political <laughs> class. Okay. They, for instance, they, mm. if if, the, if you give them two days, they will say it, it should have been five days. If you bring it to one day, they say no, you should have made it ten days. But what is the ideal situation? I mean, bearing in mind this whole scenario that we have on in our hands US, now. In the do you US, conclude in the, in the US, litigation? My sister, it's not every do you matter conclude that litigation before swearing in? Is that the ideal no, situation? No, I don't think so. I don't, okay. I don't agree with that. In Why? The, Why don't you agree with first that? First and foremost, I think that you do not rush to legal processes. If you rush them, you may hurt an innocent person or you may allow an inno a guilty person to go free. So there needs to be time in terms of the ability to go to... See, we watched 12 and a half hours. 12 and a half hours. Excruciating Excruciating. Hours. Nine, 15 minutes break for those judges. Mm. We sat through that to go through step by step all of these things. What does it mean? What I'm saying is that we need to, first and foremost, push those who have responsibility to understand that they have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. and that they should take it seriously. Who are those? You, you, the, are you the, the people I'm talking about are the politicians. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that we over-respect them. I think we do not put their legs on the fire the way we should. I think we give them comfort in a way that makes them constantly talk about somebody who we have been pushing to reform and is reforming, and they are the ones who have refused to take one step okay, in so the far. issue Let, of Now, so far, you also issue. believe that right. um, the length of time can be made shorter. Mm -hmm. Like, how many days after the election result do you then suggest? I, I, in, the, in that area, what I think that is important is that if you, well, no matter the number of days that you have, if you prepare well, you will, you will not have issues with time. It is the bad farmer that complains about hoes and knives. The one that has sharpened his hoe, that, has, that is ready to farm, gets to the farm, does the work, mm. and does not have any issue with the, with the tools. The point for me is that 
the political class. And that is what I, my advocacy will be centered on in the next few days. Needs to come face to face with the mirror and look itself. It may not like what it sees there, but it must come to the point where look at the, the, the issues you are talking about in NINEC. We can deal with logistic challenges. Okay, the issue of technology. And by mm -hmm. the way, like I was trying to tell you, yeah. it's not every matter that goes to court in, okay. in, in some crimes. Mm -hmm. they, they do an administrative inquiry into what you are bringing. And mm -hmm. this one, they said, no, we refuse. Because most of what you are coming to court with, if you listen to that judgment, are things that have been resolved. So how do we ensure that not just the outcome, but the process? The process seems to be where the challenge is. There is no, the politicians As, are making a lot of hue and cry over the process. Mm. Take your time and look at A certain process does not necessarily produce a certain outcome. Mm. Mm. The fact that you have a certain process will not necessarily guarantee that you have a certain outcome. You can have a certain process that is... So what we have been insisting on is, first and foremost, what have we done with accreditation? Have mm -hmm. you checked the data on the beavers? 98% in the number of polling units where it is deployed. Mm. It is not the judges that are saying so. It is observer reports that are saying accreditation and voting went well in 98% of polling units, which means we have resolved one issue, the issue of accreditation. And how did that play out? Mm. You have states that have 6 million in voter registration. Seven million in voter registration, three million in voter accreditation. During voting, they were not able to do up to two million. Right. They were not able to do 1.5 million. Mm. What does that tell you? The introduction of beavers, which is technology, mm. helped in ensuring that voter identification theft was reduced. All right, it's an no, ongoing mind. conversation. <laughs> Ezenwa Huangu, Partners for Election Reform. Thank you so much Electoral. for joining us. Electoral reform. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.